Hello everyone and welcome to another video by Upgrade or Trash It. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is attempting to walk you through how to install a copy of Windows XP onto a Dell laptop. Now it's a three stage process. The first thing we need is we need an ISO image of Windows XP. Secondly, we then need to use a bootable USB piece of software for our USB stick, which will take that ISO of Windows uh, XP and actually make it work on the USB. And then thirdly, we need to actually plug that USB into our Dell laptop and load it on there. Right, so first things first, what we're looking for and what I'm actually looking for here is I'm, I'm in Google. I've typed in Windows XP 64 bit activated ISO download. Now, what that means is I'm looking for the ISO of Windows XP. I'd like it to be 64 bit and, and activated means I don't need to put a license code into it. OK, so I've actually one that I've used before is this one here you can see the address up here and i know that this is a solid iso and that it's pre-activated so you don't need a license code for it which is perfect but unfortunately for some reason the internet is down now i used it earlier today but um, now four or five hours later um, i can't get fluffnet just isn't working but if you like use that one try that one first there's the exact um, url use that and then download that and that could be and if you use that then i can personally vouch for the fact that it's safe and that it works but let's look for a backup okay and i'm going to go for this one here so i'm back in my google page windows xp 64 blah 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 and i'm going to go for this one here um Nope, that's the wrong one. As is that. So which one was I looking at earlier? Yes, here we go. It's this one here. So it's at um, archive.org, but there's the exact URL. So just use that and I'll include the URL in the description as well. And so what we're going to do is we are going to go across to the onto the right hand side and we're going to click on there's a um, white arrow with a with a blue background. Just click on the ISO image like that. And then you can see here we go. It's beginning to download. And this will take around 10 minutes, I would have thought. Fantastic. So you can see that that has now completed. And that if I go into my if I show my downloads folder, there we go. There's the um, there's the file. Sorry, here it is here. <laughs> I'm, um, yeah, this this is the one here. Um, so that's in my that's in my downloads file. The next thing to do is we need a piece of software that will turn a USB stick into a bootable USB stick. And if you've done, if you've done a bit of research around this um, topic before, then there's a variety of 
then there's a variety of these that you may have come across. One of them is Win Setup from USB, which is mentioned from quite a few people on YouTube. Another one is, I think it's called Boot to USB. Um, no, maybe I'm maybe I'm getting that wrong. Sorry, I'm confusing you. Anyway, the one the one that I use and is incredibly easy, and I use it to create not just for this XP um, edition, but I've used it for all my Windows 10 and my all my Windows 11 stuff as well. Is called Rufus. Okay, it's a free piece of software. It's teeny tiny and it's perfectly safe. So if you just you can just download it here. Just get rid of the ad, and then you can see what we've got there. Okay, at this stage, you also need to put a USB stick into your um, plug it into your computer, and it needs to be at least eight gigabytes. Now, I just got 16 gigabytes because I actually think at the moment they're cheaper than eight gigabytes. One. OK, so that shows that's where my USB stick is. It's it's found it. <coughs> now, the next one here is we need to show it where the is the uh, ISO images. OK, so this is the one that we want. This is the one that we've just downloaded. OK, so this is in my downloads folder. So that goes like that. And then you can see that it's um, it's populated that box there, which is perfect. Partition scheme, keep this MBR. Don't change the target system to BIOS. Um, so the volume label, that's just referring to the um, USB stick. Make sure the file system is NTFS. And then all you need to do is just do start. And this will warn you that everything on your USB stick will be wiped. And again, this process will take about 10 or 15 minutes. So there we go. The ISO has been copied onto the USB and we can boot from it. So that's what I'm going to show you in the next part of the video. So having modified our copy of Windows XP, it's time to load it onto the 6420. But before we do that, I just want to go into the setup of this laptop and just check one thing. So let's turn it on. And then press F2 to get into the setup menu. And then I want to go down to the system configuration menu. And then I want to check the SATA operation. Now, you want to make sure you can see that mine is, um, I've got ATA selected. So make sure that you too have ATA selected. And if you have to change it, remember to come down into the right bottom right hand corner and click on apply and then exit. And once we've done that quick check, we are ready to go. So we're going to turn it back on and now we're going to do F12. And then I'm going to direct it towards the USB <coughs> where my XP files are. Pressing any key 
to boot from USB. And off we go. Now here we can see we've got um, drive C, E, G and D. Now D is the USB stick that I've got plugged in so I don't want to touch that but the rest I want to see if I can di uh, delete the partitions so here we go. And then go back Okay, so it's now all on partition space, and so I just press enter on that. And I'm going to select to format the partition using the NTFS file system, the quick one, and off we go again. Okay, a little bit of a glitch here, so I'm going to go to exit and then I'm going to go to, I'm going to restart it. And then I'm going to go for boot options. So I don't know exactly what happened there because it went into setup for some strange reason and then I clicked on exit and then I restarted the computer and at that point it seemed to get a grip and go to where it should have started from anyway and and I didn't I don't think me pressing F12 did anything Okay, for this part here, I am okay. So, what's interesting here is that actually my mouse isn't working. So, I'm going to pause this and see if I can get another mouse working. So this is really interesting. I've actually plugged in an external USB mouse and just let me show you. Just there, the side of the laptop, you can see the USB stick and then there's the USB receiver for the mouse in that um, socket. Let me take it back to there.
and you can see that actually it's working. And for the record, it's a Logitech mouse. Okay, so let's go back here. There's a, uh, a gen uh, automatically generated computer name now. I'm not going to worry with an administrator password or anything. So I'm just going to do next at this point. Okay, so it's got the right time, ironically, but completely wrong time zone. So there we go. We'll go for London in the UK. And off we go again. So this is the final parts of the setup. I've still got the USB pen in, sticking. Okay. I'm not going to really worry about the automatic updates. So here we go. That installed in 20 minutes. So you can see that there's a successful installation of Windows XP. Obviously, everything's not working correctly. The, the resolution could be a lot better. So in an ideal world, that would need a driver. Um, there's no connection to the internet, so and there is a Wi-Fi card in this laptop. So that would be another device driver to find. Um, but you can see in terms of responsiveness, just to have a little play around with it and to, to go down memory lane, seeing some of the, the parts of the of the installation brought back so many memories for me. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. And as you can see, it seems to be a really quick process, a couple of little uh, glitches, but hopefully nothing that's too big to put you off. Thank you for watching.